Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 4th, and right now we are looking at the infrared slash visible satellite imagery. You can see the rays of the sun moving across Pacific Ocean, exposing our monster storm out here across the Gulf of Alaska. Powerful atmospheric river can be seen stretching all the way back past the Hawaiian Islands, all the way across the Central Pacific towards the Western Pacific here. So we've been making a running joke here over the last couple of days. As you can see, our storm move across the Pacific Ocean there, We're calling it the Panda Express, because if you watch the loop, you you can see its connection all the way back to the Western Pacific, all the way across the country of China out there. So kind of having a little fun there with this atmospheric river. Day one excessive rainfall outlook. We do have a moderate risk up here for the Olympic Mountains. So, and I'll show you why that's going to be the case here as we are really got some high freezing levels here and a lot of rain incoming here over the next couple of days. And this is going to stretch back down across Western Oregon where already huge amounts have fallen over the last 48 hours. This is the 48 hour rainfall forecast national weather service Seattle might be kind of misrepresenting things here a little bit here because a lot of this is going to fall in a 24 hour period and probably an over an inch of rain in a 12 hour period for Seattle but huge amounts coming for the Cascades of Washington Oregon you can see we've got flood watches we've got wind advisories as well blustery winds especially across the northwest interior and the coastal areas maybe some gusty winds even across some of the central Puget Sound and some of the southern Puget Sound there as well and looking at the NAM 3KM, probably overdoing it a little bit across some of the Puget Sound area, but still some gusts up into the mid and upper 40s across the Northwest Interior and gusts up towards 50 miles per hour for some of the Oregon and Washington coast as we go through the afternoon. Avalanche danger is still high across some of the Cascades of Washington. You can see Mount Hood. This would include British Columbia. Keep that in the back of your mind. We've dropped huge amounts of snow here over the last few days, and we've brought those freezing levels way up, and we have a lot of rain to go here, folks. So you can only be looking at avalanche danger but maybe some rock slides and some flooding and some water running over roadways. So keep your eyes on the waterways if you were out and about across the back country over the next couple of days. Snoqualmie River near Carnation. You can see it's getting up towards major flood stage as well. A few other rivers may reach that area. This actually downtrended a little bit here on the latest update, but really we could be getting flooding across some of the urban and small stream areas quite easily as well. This is Paradise. We've gone above freezing there this morning. You can see the freezing level is supposed to go above 10,000 feet. So we can continue through the day today and then finally drop back down towards the end of the week where we might bring some snow back to the mountains there. We'll check a look at that briefly in the extended forecast as we go through the video. This is Whistler, that freezing level rising all the way up into British Columbia also. Now looking at the herd, the 3KM, this is uh, going to go out 48 hours here, but it's been raining for a lot of this morning here across some of western Washington, and you can see some pretty intense rainfall that is going to be moving in through the afternoon hours, and that's why they have that moderate risk up there for the Olympic Mountains, and they even mentioned the moderate risk could have been extended to some of the southern Cascades here as well, and I'll show you that in the discussion in a bit, but look at this fire hose just hanging out over western Washington all the way on in through tomorrow morning. You can see it's not budging much and just kind of sitting there and it's going to be impacting western Oregon again as well as we go on in through tomorrow night and all the way on in through Wednesday morning this just continues and that's when the her and runs there and now taking a look at the Doppler radar what it looks like right now you can clearly see some areas of heavier rainfall that are going to be impacting the Olympic mountains and that is why they have the moderate risk there and this is eventually going to be marching its way eastbound across much of western Washington you can see all the rainfall warnings up here across British Columbia for the storm system as well. Now go ahead and dive in back into our weather model maps here. This is 850 millibars. There's Washington, there's Hawaii to the bottom left. Check it out. We are bringing the tropics and the subtropics to the Pacific Northwest. Look at that tongue of warm air here. That's why our freezing levels are going up so much over the next couple of days. But the good news is, is as we get towards the end of the week, we're probably going to bring them back down, if nothing else, and maybe even some snowfall for the higher terrain. But the extended forecast has been showing additional atmospheric river action potentially through the extended. We'll worry about that here at another time over the next day or two. One thing at a time here. Now, taking a look at the National Blend of Models, you've got total precipitation in inches. And we're going to scroll through this and look at the rain shadowing effect there to the northeast of the Olympic Mountains. Some of the Olympic mountains could be getting eight, 10 inches plus of precipitation and virtually zero here for some areas of Port Angeles and Squim and big amounts across the Cascades as well. As you can see, the atmospheric river sag to the south, Seattle piling up the rain. Also big amounts across Mount Rainier. And then again, Western Oregon has been hit very hard already over the last couple of days and 
huge amounts are going to be incoming here as we go through the day Wednesday also. And now as we scroll a little bit further, you can see additional systems coming through the weekend also. So a lot of precip incoming here over the next week plus time period. And this is Gold Beach Municipal Airport on the Oregon coast. So heads up, there is another big round of rainfall coming, showing three plus inches on the European in a 24 hour period. Tillamook, something similar, 3.34 on the last night's or yesterday afternoon's European run. This is last night's European for Seattle, actually showing two inches here in a 24 hour period. And that would subject some of the area to urban and small stream flooding. This is paradise. All this rainfall here, look at this ensemble agreement. I mean, it's on its way. The atmospheric river is poised. It is offshore and it's moving inland. And that's four inches of rain at paradise there in a 24 hour period. So there's going to be some interesting uh, scenarios unfolding out there with some of those raging torrents of water coming down off the mountain. So heads up, Keep your eyes on those waterways if you do have to be out and about. This is Quilly, Washington. Big winds coming for the coastal areas up towards 50 miles per hour, maybe even a little bit higher according to the NAM 3KM with some heavy rain ongoing. So if you like stormy weather, the Washington coast and the Olympic Mountains are really a nice choice as you go through the day today and tomorrow. Here's looking at snow depth in inches. This is the European, and this is what we've been looking at the last few days with this snow kind of trailing away as we raise those freezing levels we go through this week but then we go towards the end of the week here and we might start to bring that back so not all hope is lost for snow lovers up there we may start to bring that snowpack back a little bit but we'll monitor the extended forecast because it looks like we might get another atmospheric river through the extended period this would be day two so this is going to sag of course back down south as this atmospheric river does it's going to bring slight risk all the way back down into oregon coastal range there as well this would be tuesday afternoon <clears throat> excuse me, Tuesday morning through Wednesday morning shown there. And day three, this goes Wednesday morning through Thursday morning as this sags all the way back south again across Oregon. And this is the day one excessive rainfall outlook one more time here. So you got the moderate for the Olympic Mountains and all the Cascades of Washington. And they do mention here this afternoon, uh, some of this uh, instability could enhance some of the rainfall totals across some of the Olympic mountains there. And they also mentioned that moderate risk impact cannot be ruled out across some of the Southern Washington Cascades. Although as you can see, they did not include that area right now with the moderate risk. They could upgrade that, but it's kind of just academic at this point. So yeah, big time rain incoming here, folks. They're talking about some areas getting up towards 12 inches across the Olympic mountains, maybe even locally higher than that. Now, looking at the uh, the European really quick, just for the wave action, you got sneaker wave action, got big waves ongoing the next few days. Don't turn your back on the ocean. Keep your children and your pets out of the surf zone, people. Every single year, we get folks that die because of these waves along the coastline and they're tragic stories. So just keep your eyes on the ocean if you're out and about out there. And we're going to have storm action as we go on in towards next weekend as well. And this is uh, National Weather Service Medford talking about the sneaker wave conditions, breaking waves 20 to 30 feet. And again, this is the Pacific Ocean, and you're right up against the shoreline there, and you can get waves even bigger than that with huge run up. So watch out for that. There's increased risk risk of beach erosion uh, also as we go through this uh, period here in the next couple days. Now taking a look at the extended forecast. So let's look at yesterday afternoon's European. This is our atmospheric river storm here pumping that warm tropical moisture into the area. Then we drop the freezing levels back down but we might keep the precipitation going and as we look off into the extended that could be some atmospheric river action there back into the Pacific Northwest there build a temporary ridge, but then look at the active extended period here with the Gulf of Alaska troughing just taking swings at the Pacific Northwest as we go towards mid-December coming up. So yeah, looks like we might remain active here. We'll continue to break that down as always as we go day by day. Now, what would that mean? So we're starting over again here. Now there's our atmospheric river sagging across the area. We're moving through six hour periods. So you can see how long that hangs out as I continue to go. Another weak system kind of moves through there as we go towards the end of the week, but lower snow levels at that point. And then maybe some more atmospheric river action. We'll see how this unfolds, but kind of an interesting system there rolling in to the early portion of next week as well. And just kind of continued bombardment here with systems across Pacific Northwest all the way in through mid-December. So potentially 
potentially continuing this active period on through the extended forecast. Again, something for us to watch day by day. Here's the 8 to 14 day temperature probability. Not much of a signal either way there. We won't get too caught up in that. But the big takeaway here is the 6 to 10 day kind of continues to show the above average. And even the 8 to 14 day still has above average here for a lot of the West Coast as we go. And uh, checking this out, I had 51 miles per hour. So it looks like SeaTac won this last round here as we went through. Uh, that was very early in the morning on Saturday there. Yeah, did some tree damage out here, caused some power outages and whatnot as well. Some actually a pretty healthy tree was uprooted near my home also. But yeah, check it out. I mean, look at that representation. Someone needs to grab this thing and put it in a textbook ASAP because look at that atmospheric river just north of Hawaiian Island stretches all the way back across Pacific Ocean. And that's coming our way here, folks. And you just saw it's going to hang out for a while. So again, watch out if you have to be out and about for those small streams, especially off in the backcountry there. You know, the limited roadways back and forth. It doesn't take much to close the passes, for example. You can get Avalanche Danger, Snoqualmie, and Stevens Pass. And I've been caught east of the Cascades for days. And back in 1996, I drove my friend to Eastern Washington there thinking we're going to be back that afternoon. And we were stuck there for three days as the passes were closed for most of the time. I should have paid more attention to the weather forecast back then because it was an atmospheric river and some interesting stuff. Had some crazy freezing rain there. Also, it's very hard to find a hotel. We were just kind of stranded there for three days. So yeah, um, passes can close. So be a heads up, heads up for that if you're out and about traveling. But anyway, um, I may do another video here tonight or might, might do a live stream tonight as well and kind of watch this atmospheric river roll in here because still the heaviest precipitation is yet to occur. It's just kind of now running into some of Western BC and Vancouver Island and you can clearly see this potent atmospheric river stretching back across the Pacific. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Stay safe out there. Watch those waterways. We'll do this again either later today or tomorrow morning. And I'll probably be out chasing the rivers at some point here on Tuesday, maybe on into Wednesday as well. And I'll probably live stream during that period also. So anyway, um, I'll talk to you guys later and I'll see you then.